Thanks, everybody. It's good to be home here after three years. I remember sitting right over there for a long time, classes in chapel, and hearing from all the awesome teachers, Bob and Hollis and Charles Spear, who's here today, and oh, Ron Montreg and others. Oh, it's good to be in this flag room. Right now, since uh, most of you are Christians, you hear, you've heard it growing up, you feel we live in a tough world, don't we? Yes. If we, we feel alone sometimes. We go through problems and frustrations. Sometimes our mistakes, our sin, we feel, oh, left by God, lost. The world view of Christians is that they are weak. Jesus died on a cross. Oh, what's all that? That's a weak man to die on a cross. What kind of person would you follow? We hope this lesson, me included, will, will benefit from the power of Jesus, the power of his Holy Spirit that he gives to us through his Father, who loves you and me very much. Are you ready? Let's go on with our lesson. I have a story to tell you. 300 men. Oh, no, 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 this is not the one. Oh, there it is. 300 men. This happened before, a long time ago. See these? Oh, no. Put that aside. These are the 300 I want to talk about. In the book of Judges. Gideon, at that time, the situation was pretty bad. The Midianites and the Amalekites with them. Anyway, there's a lot of them. And I'm Gideon. I'm looking around, talking, talking to God. Do we have enough soldiers? God says, you have too many soldiers, too many. What do you want me to do? Tell all those who are afraid, go home. All those who are afraid, go home. 22,000 <laughs> Jewish men left. Now they're really small. Is that, is that enough? No. Too many men. <laughs> Fine. Okay. Go to the, get a drink of water. Some of the people come and they get down. <laughs> go home. Go home. Go home. I'm watching some that come. Okay, you can stay. Those that just dropped everything, it dropped down to 300. Those who were cautious and looked around as they drank. Imagine that. 300 men were left with this vast army all around them. What did Gideon say? Let's, let's go down this valley and see it's full of the army, full of the enemy. They looked like grasshoppers. There were so many of them. 300, we can conquer them. In the camp, you see the tents spread out all over the place. Okay. During the night, the dream loaf of bread, barley roll, went down the hill into the valley and hit the tent and destroyed the tent. He woke up. He said, I told a story. That's our plan that God has given us wisdom. They stood up the next night, and here they are. They have a, a lantern and a horn. We're ready. Go. And they blew the horn. They lit their lights, and the soldiers down there became afraid and began to run every which way. And they started killing each other, fighting each other. And the victory came to Gideon. There were more, more wars after that. It was a big victory, 300 men against that whole slew, that whole army. 300 men? Is that what it is? Look what we did, 300 men. Overcome, less like the Spartans. Oh, in Greeks' time, 
That was God who did all this. He's the all-powerful God that helped them. We give him the glory for the victory. Today, oh, we said that happened a long time ago. No, it applies to us today through Jesus who wants to talk to us. Our question, our question for us today, are you crying? Are you frustrated? You lost your job, you had a car accident, you broke. Friends reject you, you and me. We're planning to our vision, the big thing, and it just falls apart. We're disappointed. Our health is decreasing. We're sick. Enemies oppose us. Our loved ones mad at us. Why, we ask to God, why is this happening to me? That's what happened to me before I came to school. I wanted to do things. My wife and I were planning to do things set up, but right in there, last two weeks before, everything, we left Phoenix, everything. Got a letter. Wow. I looked at my letter. I was shocked. My jaws dropped. I was depressed. It said, your health. Insurance, if you want to continue, you have to pay $2,300. I had no money. I paid off everything I've written. I was full of grief. Should I stay home and not go to church? Uh, I was just depressed. Called Bob and Holly. Sorry, it's all messed up. I have to postpone. I don't know what to do. I was depressed. My preaching power. Uh, they came over to talk to me. And, uh, I was just depressed. I wanted to just stay in my bedroom, watch TV, and give up, you know. Don't want to see people. Don't want to talk to anybody. That's part of my in immaturity. I know that that time it was not working right. Wh where did our power go? What's wrong? $2,000, how can I do that? Hey, I checked a little bit and had some meeting with the elders. Sure, and they pay for it. They paid it all off. Now I can go to Lubbock. Thank you for giving me for doubting. I need to worship you more. Yesterday, I'm so sorry what I did yesterday. That's one of the first points of my lesson. But I had to depend upon God. Learn to do that. My understanding, my my experiences. Uh, so, and now I'm excited, and I came and stayed here for two years. First year, kind of awkward. I was afraid I would fail or just didn't know. Uh, but I saw wonderful teachers, but didn't trust myself. Came through the encouragement, 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 the counseling, the experiences, support. The second year, over my head. <laughs> He, I learned to depend on upon him. Amen. You can learn to depend. You can overcome anything. Why? He is still, he loves you. He wants to see you succeed and bring more glory to him. Not glory to yourself and build your ego up. But no, you, you're happy to serve. You're happy to but do the service for him and help him spread his love. I have a question. Back, back one. Can you back it up, Matthew? Can you go back one slide? Oh, there it is. That's the question. Tom taught it about the, uh, Tom said, the sword Hard time, the frustration, persecution. What can separate you from the love of God? What can do it? So there's something missing the way that it's shown. But anyway, we'll go ahead. We have God. 
good news uh, for you. We have good news. He has uh, everything for you and me. We need to look to him. He has the answer. What is it? In the past, we, we learned about the good news, the short history of Peter's travel and Paul's travel. It was awful. Persecution for many Christians. We see story after story, our brother in Christ, Lord, just, they just went in preaching, preaching. Saul, he was first called Saul. He was just he was grabbing Christians and throwing rocks at them and killing them like Stephen because of his faith, being persecuted. Then he was glad to hold the coats while others threw the rocks at Stephen. He's dead. He's ready to go on. Then he began to grab many uh, uh, people at churches. They heard something happening. Oh, another other places. He wanted to take them back and put them in prison. He got the approval, the papers, and went toward Damascus. But, but lights came down, knocked him down. My Lord, my Lord. <laughs> Jesus says, I'm Jesus. Why are you persecuting me? Go. Someone will meet you there. They brought him to Damascus. And he thought all night, didn't eat and drink or anything, for he couldn't see. And somebody came to him, what are you doing? Get up and be baptized. He began to understand what the Old Testament scriptures really meant. Isaiah and Jeremiah talked about the new covenant, the, the son, the he began to understand the Psalms and the Proverbs and the, what was said. And that was the key. But he began to travel and preaching the gospel of good news. Pharisee, he was a high Pharisee. Every popular, he had degrees on his wall. <laughs> From PhD, you can imagine, like, that's Saul's life before. He has a resume, he could put everything in it. <laughs> Threw it all away. Became the poor servant of the Lord God. He had a thorn in the flesh, something that was bad bothering him, make, make them suffer. Ooh. But he continued to persevere. He continued to tell good news. Paul wrote to the church in Rome, Anything that separates you and me from God? No, nothing can. We are more than conquerors through him who loves us. Wow. Let's look deeply to the words. Very important for us to see. <coughs> Next. Knowing all these things. Not me. It's open. This is open class. You have anything you want to say? It's in all these things. Suffering, yes. Pain. You have struggles. It's not fair. Un injustice. Those are bad, bad communications. <laughs> but he says, Remember this. He already did that. Can you go back? <laughs> Red button. The lower verse says, as is written, for your sake, we face death in all day long. We face everything. We are considered a sheep led to the slaughter. <coughs> What's Paul quoting from? Where'd that come from? Psalm 55. 
Oh, 44, I missed it. Same verse. What's Psalm 44 talking about? Talking about, I can hear, I ask you to make things new for Israel, help it to grow, help it to be exciting. We have this good relationship with you. I hear people are, are going astray and you're leaving us now. You're not with us anymore? You rejected us? You humbled us? Our, our pride as a nation is worth nothing? No longer do you go out with our army? We're frustrated? You gave us up? You scattered us among nations? Why? You sold us for nothing, for just pennies? We depend upon you. What's going on? You made us reproach to our neighbors. They, they sing songs about us. By words. They're just losers. You're nothing among the nations. All the gossip against us. It's shameful. We live in disgrace and shame. And they laugh at us. They taunt us. Very depressed. Reviled. They say awful things. Put us under pressure, crushing us. You covered us. They look at us like we're chasing animals. And covered us in darkness. God is light. We were with him, but we slip away from him into darkness. And we're to be slaughtered. You see, verse after verse after verse here. Something, it makes us think about some things we go through. Maybe you haven't experienced that. Maybe. You see that in other countries, like what's happened to Iraq and Syria and the way they don't love Jesus. And you're seeing people being killed or losing everything. Churches, families being spread, no, destroyed. That's happening all over the world, especially those countries over there. Now, we were with God, and now we seem... Nothing's working. Now we're praying and, and crying out, please, please help us. We want a relationship with you. We need your help. We're pleading for that. And God always answers. Paul's answers to us in Romans 8 is what? Yes. Anyone. 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 Remember, we studied the book of Romans, chapter 1, 7. To all that are being Rome, beloved, they stayed there, beloved of God, they stayed there. Called to be saints, that's another word for Christian. The book is written to saints, the Christians. In Rome, the church, the church family. It could represent this church anywhere. It's all Christian people. What does he say? Oh, this word, saints. If he had another word for it, it's another word for Christian, another word for follower. Are you? Are we? Yes. Yeah, we're included in that word. Are we? Yes. I hope all of you realize that we, we are loved by him. We are with him. It's very important to know that. Romans 6, 3 and 4 emphasizes this. Why? Jesus died on the cross. 
He was put in a tomb, and he was resurrected to life. Yeah. And he gives us his Holy Spirit, what you see from in Acts 2. But this emphasis is here. We have the cross, and Jesus was put in that old tomb. Then you're raised to a new life. Let's look at Galatians 3, verse 26, 27, where it says, So in Christ, all of us are his children. Through what? Through our faith. This relationship with him, obeying him. For all of us have been baptized into Christ. We've been clothed with him. And we enter Christ. He clothes us. Romans 6, 17. But thanks be to God that though you used to be slaves of sin, you had no hope then, you... You now have come to respond to the gospel, this beautiful story of the father and son. Come, I want to hear more. You responded to him and obeyed. I believe in him as Lord and as the son of God. I believe he died on the cross for my sins. And yes, he was raised from the dead. Yes, he's now at the right hand of God, sitting on the throne. I believe that. And you repent of your old life. And you are immersed in water for remission of those sins. You are clothed with Christ. And you become a disciple, a student. You have beautiful feet. You tell other people about the lovely story of his son. And you follow the teaching, the pattern, one, two, three, the pattern of teaching. A long time ago, popular day, people take a pattern. I like that dress. And they take a, a pattern and they watch the measurements, you know, which one you want to follow. And you make, and for, you get the fabric, you put it out and dress it over the pattern. You cut around the pattern. You follow the image. And then you put it in the machine and you show it up. And, oh, you have a nice dress. That's you following the pattern. One, two, three, or whatever. You hear, you believe, you repent. Then you're baptized for forgiveness of sins. And you follow and you study his word. You become his disciple. You have a relationship with him. You're united with him. And you continue till he comes again. Very important. Why? Go back one. You have been set free from sin and have become slaves to righteousness. You've become clean, washed clean because of him. That's who we are. We are more than conquerors. Anything you've overcome, some little problem you've solved, and then next begin to get a little bit better, you get better and better and better. Faith that overcame, been successful. Thank you. Yes. I saw the different versions, how it was translated, how you can see what it means to be over, of overcome. Look at some of these phrases. Overwhelmed. Overwhelmingly conquer. That's a big victory. It sounds like that, doesn't it? No, overwhelmed. <laughs> the next one. Oh, we will do even more to win. Last week, a national championship. Oh, we One more year. One more year. Oh, yes. It's 
And then, oh, wow, they do it again. No. You'll be champion forever. Oh, victory. Well, next year you got to try again. Who's next? No, it's all finished. We stepped on it. Uh, we killed Satan. He's not going to be a victory. We're going to keep going. Okay. This one, we have a complete victory. That's what it means. Maybe Romans 8 is really powerful. I remember saying to Bob, we see all these 10 points. Wow, wow. I have to say, wow, wow, wow. We're baptized. It's finished. Oh, now we suck our thumb the rest of our life and walk around like babies. Baby Christians. Oh, wow, they get hit. Is that me? Oh, I don't want to be that. No. I like this paper. I owe all this money just when I don't have any money. I want to go to school and it's all come to an end. I can't go to Lubbock. Uh, oh, my wife. That's okay. We'll find a way. Let's pray. I was so discouraged. I pray half heartedly. Ate that night. Went to my bedroom. Got on the bed. Watch some TV, shook my head. I was so disappointed. I tried to be smiley, but I couldn't. Maybe God doesn't want me to go. It looks like that's it. I don't know. Uh, what I learned the power from him. When I was very sad, Jesus was warned. What would happen when you get upset? The elders read that, and that's how Jesus <laughs> gave, gave me the ability. Don't worry. Jesus will bless us if we just accept and go and keep it all open. Thank you. Thank you. I think that's right. Thank you for sharing. Now, let's look at this. Oh, the first one up there. There's no condemnation for those who are in Christ. Jesus already died for you, covered by blood. You see, you see that? Rule. In the law, if you broke one rule, you're punished by death. You know. But Jesus is willing to die on the cross that frees us from that condemnation. We are more than conquering. Then the second one. The mind governed by the flesh is death. But when we're baptized, we get that spirit inside of us. It rules our mind. We have a relationship with him. It says, oh, you get peace and life. Very important verse. The spirit testifies for us. Yes, he belongs to you, the spirit says. Abraham, father, remember circumcision and circumcise the boy. Show they have a relationship with God. We are baptized into Christ. We circumcise the heart. See, we receive the Holy Spirit. It's, we are stamped like a seal. We belong to him. We don't belong to the devil. We are God's children. Our seal, our belief in him. We have the victory through him. The fourth reason, is, is anything suffering, is that worth it? Suffer, they suffer over there. Tom was teaching it recently about suffering. Yes, we will suffer. Yeah, that's part of it. So forget about it. Jesus will, will be with you. You have to remember, we have to support each other. Very important. You be, when somebody gets depressed, we have to go to them and share the Bible with them and lift their spirits again. It's time for one hour. The next day, one week, we suffering. We need to love and support. Can we do anything for you? He is glorious. Jesus is where? Where is Jesus right now? He's in heaven. He's alive. He's not dead. 
He's already resurrected. We know that. We're like him. We, we hope to be with him. I'm building a room for you. I'm going to come back for you, he says. Hold on to those promises. Don't look at all the, the problems you may face here. That's a small compared to this victory we have. I almost let go. I need to hold on to that. Thank you, brother, for coming to me. Thank you for explaining to me. <coughs> Five. Not only, but we ourselves, we have the first fruits of the Spirit. We don't have all this negative stuff that overcomes us. People come to us. We hear it. When I was in school, the first semester, right down this hall, preaching lab, <laughs> I was awkward. I joined the second year. As a freshman, you know, it's my time to preach. I got up, I prepared my lesson, and I preached my lesson. The teacher, boop, 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 shot me full of holes. <laughs> wrong decision, wrong, decision, blah, 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 blah. The, all the, I was just machine gun. <laughs> I started packing up. Bob said, hey, he's not finished talking to you. That's enough, that's enough. Yeah, that's not, I've had enough, you know. <laughs> I'm packing up my books, and, and I'm ready to go. <laughs> I'm quitting. <laughs> I was ready to go home. <laughs> I was ready to go back to Phoenix. Uh, what am I doing here? They don't like me anyway, so, wow. So what, <laughs> why be it? Why, why did they shoot me like that? <laughs> It's finished. Bob pulls up. Hey, 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 Phil. Hollis came up. He talked to me. Talked to me. Explained. <laughs> they explain. Hey, hey, hey. He knows a lot. He knows the truth. But what, what, I, my pride. Shh, there's nothing there. <laughs> hey, it takes time. Father, I need help. I need help. It's crushing me. It's killing my spirit. They come in. Hey, hey, they talk. Okay. I'm sorry for my reaction. I need to learn something. I need to be humbled and, and, and listen. Let the spirit talk to God. Now, when I graduation, that teacher came in and gave me a big hug. <laughs> Verse 6 says the same thing. We're weak, but we're more than conquerors. It no matter what it is, the Holy Spirit is there to help us in our weakness. We need help. We need a Trust our Father all the time. Seven, we know that in all things, in all things. What did I say there? All things. <laughs> can be, God can do good or bad, doesn't make any difference. Just humble yourself. But, he says, but, but, God is working. For good, for those who love him, who have been called according to his plan, we're just we're, we're just a little thing like a vegetable. We're just vapor. That's all we are. We live on this earth just a short time. We're with him. We're dependent upon him. That's who we are on earth. He's going to lead us. Sometimes we're awkward. Sometimes me too. We need to see his purpose. We're, we're frustrated. We don't know what we have to go through. I look back. I look and laugh at myself. Yes, I was so full of pride. Thank you. Oh, now I see. I see the discipline. 
I need you to become mature. It hit some bumps in the road as you try to mature and have this relationship with him. I know you have to suffer for Christ. You preachers and teachers, song leaders, all of us working together, we have to clean the floor. We have to do other things. We're under the head of Christ. We support A to Z. Number eight, for all those who knew before, was predestined. Before we were born, God knew us. The whole universe. He knew us before. He knew he would have to come and die on the cross. That's why he came. Jesus was our firstborn. We're all uh, little brothers of Jesus. The Jews, the firstborn, wow, he's the most important. He's the one that gets a cigar. <laughs> hey, my son, no. Oh, well, my mom. It's time. Everybody's in celebration because we're going to have a son victorious. That first song, the second born, the second, well, blessing. But that first one, double blessing. Uh, Jesus, like the double blessing, we have that. Wow, wow, we can't go to heaven without him. He's the leading the way for us. Be sure he's our brother. Okay. have that. Now, we're thankful for everything. Now, he says, for I'm convinced that neither death nor life nor angels or demons anything. E angels, demons, neither the present nor the future nor any power any strength, it doesn't matter, height or depth, anything else in all creation, nothing, nothing can crush. Anything, nothing can separate us from the love of God. Nope, nothing. We will hold on. We will suffer. We will hold on. That's the story he's trying to tell us. We, he can lead us on this journey to a relationship as we mature and grow in our relationship with him. He helps us. When you go home and you see struggling frustration, well, work with them, love them. And remember them and don't forget. If it all comes at one time, wow. We need this. Me with all these. 300 soldiers against all these others. That's just the 300. 22,000 left. Like Gideon. 10,300 left. And then finally, nope. He watched those who lapped, those that didn't do it right. The 30,000, 32,000 that swindled down to 300. Hey, I need more. Look, look how many they have. No. Yes. He's in control. He wants us to trust him. We can overcome when we hold up the lamp. No, Paul says, in all these things, more than con conquerors, through him who loved us. That's how we do it. At the age of verse, this whole chapter, no, we're more than conquerors, and these verses are still related to that. Remember, there's no, no one against us. If, if God's for us, then he gave up his own son. He gave him for us all before, from the, for the past and the future. Now, who 
who will bring any things against us? Oh, you did it. You stole it. No. Nope. For he is satisfied. Why is God satisfied? The law? The punishment? No. He is satisfied through his son. Romans 8, 31, 34. Who then is the one that condemns? He's at the right hand. He's interceding for us. This picture now. See the death, that's pretty sad. Everybody left. A few people stayed. Peter even denied him. A strong, loving man. He even died, denied him. Walking along, sad. I, I denied him three times before the rooster crowed. Everybody's leaving. He died on the cross. It's all finished, he said. Hope is gone. Lightning hits. Uh, the veil low was spread. The priest had to hurry and, get and sew it all up so it can continue their worship all the way from the bottom to the top. Hmm. But he was put in the tomb, stayed there for three days. What, what, what? He arose for you. Never heard of a dead man rising. I've heard of Jesus who raised others, but they died again. But this time, he was resurrected and lived forever. Jesus intercedes with us like, like you have an advocate. He go, you go into court with him. He has responsibility. There he is. He, you and I look at it, oh, I'm guilty. Oh, oh, oh. I did something wrong. Uh, what's wrong with Phil? What's going on with him? I have to go in and tell my story. Does he get mad? I don't know. But we find support. It's very important. In First John, uh, we took a course with Gerald Payton, a very powerful, great lover of First John. And in that we learn God is the light and we walk in the light. We have relationship with him. We have fellowship with him. His son washes our sins continually. We're with him. If I say, I'm sorry, I can't come, but then, oh, I have this relationship. I'm tied to him. He's guiding me. I'm baptized. Then I go back into the world. Jesus know, doesn't know you. As long as you stay with him, yes, you, you belong to him. He says, I know him. And God looks, I don't see any sin. A few of our support Mistress, I, I support him. I stand with him. Imagine things are awful and we, we steal, we commit adultery, we kill. How would, but that would destroy his church if he do that. It would destroy his family. It would be like sticking the spear in the into him. You're seeing your children. And you say, why, why did I do that? Why did I hurt him? We must hold on. We must hold on with, with him. Support him through all of our travels till he comes again. And after death we can meet him in paradise. Jesus is coming again. Now that's what this is saying. 
Oh, this song, I love this song. I've decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. I've decided to follow him. No turning back. No turning back. I've decided to follow Jesus. Why? In all these things, we are... are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Amen. Thank you. Praise the Lord, all ye nations. Praise him, all ye people. He loves us very much. He loves us all very much. The Lord will be faithful to us forever. Praise, praise the Lord.